In our last video, we looked at the Adam T8V monitors, and I said that one of the downsides was that I could really hear the cabinets, and we'd look at ways in which those of us with even the most basic of DIY skills could make some improvements. Well, having taken one completely to pieces, as we kind of expected, one of the weak links seems to be this the front baffle. Now this is made of plastic, it's a little bit ringy, and I think one way we can really make a big improvement is to find a way to damp this. So suggestions in the comments below please. I've already given the inside a good coat of PVA and my first thought is to add mass to it by filling the voids with fine cement, modeling clay, epoxy resin, old chewing gum, something like that. But you lot are clever, so let us know what you think we should try to put in here down below. We're also not huge fans of Class D amplifiers, so Jez Kerr of Kerr Acoustic fame, a super talented speaker designer, as anyone who's heard these bad boys will confirm, is coming down later in the week, and we're going to try making a high-end passive crossover for the Adams and running them off £14,000 worth of amplifier. So stay tuned for that video, coming soon. Anyway, on to today's topic, and we were keen to find out how the Lewitt microphones we've had for a couple of months now perform when recording drums. So we asked our good friend and fabulous drummer, Stacey Plant, down to the studio for a few hours, set some mics up, spent five minutes setting up some, frankly, abysmal lighting, and hit record. All the audio files are available for free download, and we want to hear how you would process them. So stay tuned until the end for details of that. So here's young James to explain what we did with the audio setup. Stacy bought a lovely Yamaha kit with him and once he'd set up and tweaked his tuning, we mic'd up the kit with as many Lewitt mics as we had and augmented that with a couple of studio staples when we ran out. Starting with the overheads, typical choices would be small diaphragm condensers, large diaphragm condensers or ribbon microphones and that choice should be dictated by what you have available and what kind of drum sound you're after. On a mellow jazz track, you might want to use the overheads to pick up most of the sound of the kit and maybe augment that with mics on the kick and snare, whereas with a large heavy rock kit with a ton of cymbals and 27 toms, you might want to use overheads more as spot mics for cymbals and close mic everything else. As a rule, small diaphragm condensers can give a little more transient detail to cymbals as they tend to have smaller and therefore lighter diaphragms that are a little more sensitive to detail at the higher end of the frequency spectrum, but it's largely a myth that small diaphragm condensers don't pick up the low end as well as large diaphragm models. They do. So bear this in mind when choosing mics for the kit. If the cymbals are overly bright and the drummer is smashing the heck out of them, then a duller microphone such as a ribbon might be the best choice. Equally, if subtle details from the ride cymbal on a jazz track is required, then small diaphragm condensers might be your best choice. In this case, Stacy is a very balanced professional drummer who can really smack the drums when needed, but lay off on the cymbals a little for a very balanced kit sound. It's this kind of drummer that you can use pretty much any microphone on and it will still sound good. And regular viewers will know that this is the present day production ethos. How do you get a great drum sound? Well, you get a great drummer on a great kit in a good sounding room. How do you get a good vocal sound? Put any half decent microphone up in front of a really good singer. This always gets you 90% of the way there. So we opted for the Lewitt LCT 140 Air on the overheads and... So let's pause just a minute and talk about this microphone. Um, we're not sponsored by Lewitt and they don't even know we're making this video, but I just want to talk about this microphone. This microphone is fantastic. We've used it on drums, acoustic guitar, have one set up on all our cameras and even have one permanently set up inside this. We've been doing a lot of video work for some local charities lately, and I thought I'd give this a go when COVID restrictions were in place instead of using our usual first choice of a clip-on lav mic like this one. That means that I don't have to fondle people to get the cable on the lav mics hidden, and we can maintain the proper social distancing guidelines, and this sounds absolutely fantastic. With careful positioning, the cardioid pickup pattern has been good enough to reject ambient noise on location. The self noise of the microphone is insanely low. It responds incredibly well to compression and EQ. And in short, if this mic and the LCT 440 were the only two microphones that existed on the entire planet, I'd be quite happy. 
This, the 140 in particular, has become one of my favorite microphones for just about anything, especially taking into account that it costs about 125 quid in the UK. And once again, this video is not sponsored by Lewitt. So we used the LCT 140 Air as overheads, the LCT 440 Pure on each of the two rack toms and the LCT 640 TS on the floor tom. By this point, we've run out of Lewitt microphones. So we put an Audix i5 on the snare, an SM57 inside the bass drum to get a little high end from the beta, and this, the mic I don't have. Ah, that's better. An old MXL microphone that Mark modified with an RK47 capsule, new circuit board, and upgraded grill from microphoneparts.com. This gives us a very Neumann U47 sound, but for a hell of a lot less dosh. All of these were fed into our trusty Focusrite Claret 8 Pre-X. Usually, we'd mic the bottom of a snare and occasionally the bottom of toms, but we wanted a natural kit sound for this recording that would take well to mix processing and felt we had enough snare snap from the overheads and more than enough tone and body from the toms. And we often find that the less mics you use on the kit, the better. If you mic a whole kit with just one microphone, then you're gonna have no phase issues. As soon as you start to add more microphones, then phase can become a problem. And it's important you pay attention to this at source and don't just throw the mics up and hit record with a view to dragging audio files around later in the DAW or using one of the phase alignment plugins. These are techniques that can be great to get you out of trouble with a poor recording, but you can't beat getting a good sound at source. And the same goes with EQ. If you want a brighter snare sound, try using a brighter microphone on a brighter snare. If you want more of the stick impact, then aim the microphone at the point the drummer hits the most often. If you want more of a ring to the snare, then point it a little further out. So once we were happy with the microphone positioning, then Stacy played through a few bars in a variety of different styles, and then it was over to Mark for processing. And what have I done? Well, a cursory glance over the Logic project shows that I've used just one plugin. We balance the kit sound using the gain on the mic pre's whilst recording, and all I've done here is put one instance of the standard EQ in Logic on a slightly ringy rack tom, cut a little at 200 hertz, done a little panning around, and that's it. I haven't even touched the faders. And here's what it sounds like. <laughs> So the Lewitt microphones perform incredibly well on drums, I think even a little better than we had first expected, and the unprocessed drums sound absolutely fantastic. So we've made all the files available for download, the link is in the description, and we really want to hear how you would mix this and what processing you would apply. So please feel free to download the files, mix away and send us your mixes along with a screenshot showing the plugins you've used upload the files to something like Google Drive, send us the link on the dedicated Drum Mix channel at the top of our Discord, there's a link in the description for that down below, or you can just go to presentdayproduction.com forward slash Discord, and then we'll take a listen to what you've done and feature some of those in a future video. Don't forget you can still get 50% off mastering using the link below, although Mark is a little snowed under at the moment, so we may only be able to keep that offer on for existing clients at some point in the near future. But if you're not sure about mastering, then please get in touch and I'll do my best to badger him into doing a free test master for you. Thanks for watching, create, don't hate, give us one of these, ding the ding dong to be notified of future videos and you'll see us in the next one.